Hello, my name is Steven Mayu, and this is my video series on practical JavaScript, where I walk you through the algorithm challenges at freecodecamp.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at Sorted Union, um, and this one is a little beefy. It's kind of difficult, but don't worry. Uh, we're going to approach this problem just like we do every other problem. We're going to break it down into its smallest components and uh, go from there. <laughs> um, but before we can break it down into its smallest parts, uh, we need to understand what the challenge is and what we have to do. So let's look at the instructions. All right, sort it union. Write a function that takes two or more arrays and returns a new array of unique values in the order of the original provided arrays. Okay, so a couple of things going on here. Um, it's going to take two or more arrays. So you can see here in the, uh, in the function, there's only like one argument right here, ARR, array. But down here, there are three arrays. In other words, three arguments. And you might recall from an earlier challenge that uh, we have to access a special arguments object uh, that's kind of like an array, but isn't exactly an array. Um, so if you need a refresher on how to, um, you know, access it, you know, easily like an array, I'm going to show you how to do that. So, um, yeah, we're going to take two or more arrays and then return a new array. Um, and no duplicates, so it has to be unique values, in other words, um, and it has to be in the same order as the uh, original arrays. Um, okay. In other words, all values present from all arrays should be included in their original order, but with no duplicates in the final array. Okay, so uh, that's basically just what I said, but it's more elegant. <laughs> The unique numbers should be sorted by their original order, but the final array should not be sorted in numerical order. So um, that's important to note. Uh, we're not going to um, we're not going to you know return a sorted array. It just has to be in the same order um, that the arguments um, are, are given to us. So uh, for example, if we uh, look at here, we have a, an array uh, one three two in the first array five two one four and two, one, okay. So it's gonna return a new array to us that would look like this. One, three, oops, three, two, five, four, okay. So one, okay, um, all right, we got it in there, and then three, okay, it's in there, and then two, it's in there, and then we add five, now it's in there. But wait a second, two, we've already added two in this array, and if we add it again, it would be a duplicate, so we're not gonna add it again. And the same goes with one, we've already added it in there, so uh, skip over it. Before, that's a uh, new value in this array, so we're gonna go ahead and add it in there. And as you can see, one, three, two, one, three, two, five, four, that's the same order that it's given to us, one, three, two, then a five, we skip over these values and a four, and then uh, we don't even add these values because, again, they are duplicates. So um, I have 15 minutes, or let me get a time checked. I have uh, approximately 11 minutes to show you two solutions. I want to show you kind of like the um, kind of the quick and dirty way, and then I'll show you a more elegant way um, to do this as well. So uh, as usual, I've got my example.html file open in my Chrome browser. I'm going to get the JavaScript console nice and ready for us. There it is, and clear it out. And I got my Atom editor, created a new JavaScript file as usual, and already uh, went ahead and embedded that on line 11 of my example.html file. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I want to do is um, create uh, uh, create an actual array uh, of this uh, of these arguments. Um, as you recall, um, we only have like one argument keyword here, not three. Um, so this is using the arguments object in JavaScript. And it's kind of like an array, but not quite. Um, you might want to check out my earlier videos um, to see you know, what that's all about. Uh, but OK, here's how we do it. I'm going to call it args. And this is going to look kind of funky. But don't worry. OK. Let's see, I think it's the. Uh, 
Okay, yep, all right. So that's just basically gonna return an array for us. So if I, okay, yep, so exactly. So I get, um, okay, I get an array of all of my different arguments and I can treat it just like, uh, like a real array. The, the ob uh, arguments object, it's sort of like an array, but you can only call the length uh, method on it. And you can also access each of the individual arguments with bracket notation, but that's it. You can't use any other array methods um, on it. So that's why we're doing this right here, okay? If, uh, if I were to you know, do some array method like this, it's not gonna work because uh, array ARR is uh, not actually an array. It's an arguments object. Okay, so we got that, and I'm going to create one more variable called here, and this is where we'll star store our unique values in the or uh, original order that they were given, us, uh, given to us. Okay, and so I'm going to say args reduce function a, b. Okay, and put this right here. And then I'm going to say return um, a dot concat b. So basically, I'm joining all three of these array, or if I have four or five of them, whatever. I'm just going to join them all together, so it's like one long array like that. Okay. And then I'm going to call the for each method on this. Okay, for each function. Okay, and it uh, needs. Um, one required argument right there. Okay, and then I'm going to say if result dot index of item is less than zero, okay, then result push item. Okay, so basically um, uh, this is going to create a new array. Um, so it's taking all of these individual arrays and then just combining them together to make like one long one. Okay, so that's all it is. Uh, that's all it's doing. And then for each, we're going through each of the items and we're saying, hey, the current item in this array, um, is it present? Okay, that's what we're asking right here with this index of. And uh, if it doesn't exist, it's going to be negative one. That's what's going to return to us. If it already exists uh, in this results array, then um, uh, it's going to return uh, the index number uh, to us. Uh, but basically, we're going through each of the uh, numbers in like this new longer array that looks like this. And this is what the um, uh, array uh, reduce is doing for us. It just creates one long array, combining everything into that. And we're saying, hey, um, we're iterating with a for each. And if the current value doesn't exist in this results array, we're going to add it to it. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to skip over it. So if we return result like this, save it go to the web browser and refresh. And there we have it. We have our um, we have our returned array with unique values presented in the exact uh, same order as given to us. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, copy and paste this into free code camp. Make sure that it works. It should. Let me go ahead. And would you look at that, even Grumpy Cat approves. Awesome. These success messages get better and better every time. All right, and checking the time here. Plenty of time. I'm going to show you a more elegant solution to, uh, to this problem. Um, let me just go ahead and copy this. I'm going to use it later. And uh, don't worry, I'm going to um, paste that again. But let me show you a slightly more elegant solution. Um, uh, I think it's kind of clever. Yeah, if I can pat myself on the back. Uh, enough talk, let's jump right into it. So I, I still need to uh, access the arguments object. So um, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did earlier. And again, this is beyond the scope of this video, but don't worry about uh, what exactly, um, you know, these, this is doing. Basically, it takes that argument object and it makes it into a real array. So we got that going. Um, I don't even need a var result variable. I'm not even going to bother with that. So I'm just going to start with return args reduce. Okay, looks familiar. Okay, function. 
Okay, and just to make it clear, I'm going to say array 1 and array 2, or I can call it A, B, doesn't matter. All right, just A, B, okay. All right, and uh, same thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to say return. Actually, I'm going to, just to make this clear, it's going to be kind of confusing if I just say A and B. All right. I'm going to say array1.concat. Now remember to use the concat method. Check out the time here, plenty of time. To use the concat method, um, I call it on one array, and then the argument that goes in concat is another array. Uh, and keep in mind that, that there are a number of things in here uh, that, um, that, that can go in here. For example, I can just, you know, I could do something like this, and it would, you know, make one long array, okay, like we did before, okay, or, 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 just follow me, I can use another array method uh, that returns a new array. For example, uh, we know that a filter, filter returns a new array to us, and so does map. App returns a new array to us, uh, and I believe sort, you know, it returns a new array to us as well, um, as does concat. So all of these array methods return arrays to us, and I don't have to put a variable in here. I don't have to put a literal array in here. Guess what? I can use an array method as an argument of another array method. And uh, let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to say uh, array.concat, okay, and r2 filter. Remember, filter returns a new array to us. Okay, let's do that. Okay, item. Wait. Uh, oops. Something got messed up here. Oops. I need to say function. There we go. Item. All right. And this is going to be kind of confusing. Do I put it right here? Nope. I always get confused where I put my... There we go. All right. So this is going to look kind of funky here, but just follow along with me. So now I'm going to filter out all of the duplicate items. All right, so how are we going to do that? Let me just check my notes right here. Okay, return, oops, array one, dot index of item. Okay, and this should also work. Let me just save that, refresh, yes. Okay, and I'm going to put my old one here, just a second, and let me just copy that. Come over here, let me check the time. Okay, I got about a minute and a half, so I think I can explain it all. Okay, and it works again. Oh, I interrupted myself uh, because I'm short on time and I want to uh, make sure that I explain everything very, very quickly. So um, again, we're just converting that argument to object into uh, an array that we can access. And we're going to concatenate uh, each of the, uh, um, the subarrays uh, into like one long one. Uh, but remember the filter method, it uh, returns a new array to us. So we're basically uh, saying, hey, if uh, the current item uh, is already present in this kind of accumulator, because remember reduce has two variables, the accumulator and the next item in the array. So if it's already uh, uh, present in the accumulator, um, then we're not going to add it. We're just going to filter it out and uh, it returns a filtered array with unique values to us and gets concatenated onto the um, array one right here at the accumulator. So that's basically how it works. It has some funky punctuation, three return statements and this stuff going on, but uh, I think it's kind of clever and pretty cool too. So uh, that's all the time that I have for in this video. I hate the rush and uh, did some crazy editing. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for improvement, please let me know in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye. Boop.